of Aussie Tech Eds. It's episode 620. Wacky do on the 14th of uh, February 2019. Happy Valentine's Day. Hope you bought your loved ones some flowers or, or cake or whatever. Maybe a boat ride. Whatever takes your fancy. Whatever it is, I, I hope you enjoyed your day. Uh, we are brought to you by startnewcompany.com.au. Register your company fast, easy and direct with ASICS. Uh, or with ASIC, there's only one of them, all docs provided and docs held in your account for download at any time later on. So if you need to register a company, do a bit of a step up from a partnership or a business name and you decide you want to uh, register a company, then uh, start newcompany.com.au. Also, athwebhosting.com.au, drag and, drag and drop website builder for, for the pro and business plans and servers operate on SSD drives, immediate activation, SSL certificates, domain registration, install WordPress, a Dream like Drupal and a lot more. All right, uh, look, uh, you can find us on Facebook, believe it or not. We're at facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads and youtube.com uh, forward slash Aussie Tech Heads. Other shows to look out for is the Aussie Max Zone. Oh, I think that's about all that's in production these days, us and those guys. All right, so uh, have a look out for them. They, they go out on Monday. Uh, I was reading this week a uh, big event on March 25th. Apple, no one knows what that's going to be, but uh, we'll find out in due course, I guess. Uh, now, look, also, what we're going to do this week is uh, Jordan and Joe and I have been working really hard on trying to get some uh, audience participation going. Now, what we're going to trial, we won't spend too much time on it this week, uh, but you've got, you have to, to participate, you have to uh, be watching the Facebook live, okay? Because we're going to try and take calls. Now, this, is, this is pretty uh, out there, but we're going to try and take calls. Now, uh, what you're going to have to do is once be watching the Facebook Live, of course, which goes out at around about 7 o'clock Sydney time on Thursday nights. Now, what you have to do is call a phone number, which we will put into the Facebook, but say for tonight, it's uh, 02-8015-2088. And if you just pop into the Facebook a comment and just leave the last two digits of your phone number, and then when you ring, I will, you'll be able to hear the show and I'll pull you in when uh, when we can, okay? So we're going to trial that. So if you have the, the need to ring, ring us up and get up us, <laughs> give that a shot. All right, we're talking about jo Jordan and Joe. Let's bring him in and uh, say good day. Let's go to Joe first. He's always first, isn't he? Uh, Joe, how you going? I'm good, thanks, mate. How you going? Good, thanks. And listen to you, hey? Listen to that beautiful new mic you've got. That's great. Yeah, it sounds, sounds good. Um, hopefully, um, won't be too much problems with it, you know, yeah, no, it sounds great. It sounds excellent. And uh, Jordan, how you going, Jordan? Oh, he's got I'm no good. <laughs> oh, there he goes. <laughs> it's, the, it's that um, anticipation of the unmute button. Oh, the, the, the no, cough button. I'm good. I'm good. I'm here two weeks in a row. I'm quite surprised. That's good. That's good. There's it's... usually, uh, there's usually a, a week or two in between lately. I've just no. been so busy. Can't keep up with my own own personal life, life. Yes, i know now you got a new air conditioner is that being put in is that going what's going yeah, on but i haven't there? had another hot day since yet oh. only, i had put in on a hot day so yep. we can get it to the end of the day right. we had heat waves and all sorts of things happening we had a bit of a hot day here yesterday i think uh you know you get the feel like temperature we got a feel like 43 it was uh yeah really hot i think overnight. i think we had the we had a massive heat wave in in melbourne a couple of weeks ago but i was up in queensland when that happened it was beautiful up there yeah, no, like yesterday was uh, quite hot. It was, I think, about 38, feels like 43. And even overnight, I only got down to about 26, 27. So it was a bit yeah, of a warm that. one. I love that. You're used to it. But no, because you're acclimatized to that, you know, no, never. temperature being a, being a Queenslander. But well, me, I love it. I can't wait to get to Queensland and get the warm weather. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, it does get up. Um, all right. Now, this week is problem solving week for Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's computers uh, they had a bit of a strange one, didn't you, Joe? You had a uh, your f screen froze everything except the mouse. Now that was really weird. Yeah, that's right. Um, over the last well, three or four days, it's been started. I've got three monitors on my setup, and it's been starting up on one monitor. And I'm thinking, hmm, maybe I bumped the, the computer, maybe the video card, you know, displaced itself. So I, I um I went in and. Uh, touched it and put it all back together and and it's come good so i'm thinking okay well that's it mm. but um yeah after a couple of days um it, it started doing it again and last night it froze and nothing fixes it but yeah we'll talk about it later on mm, okay then no worries all right well let's uh look at that was your opportunity joe it's gone yeah that's it <laughs> tech support over <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. So. Any any more tech support after that? It's twenty bucks. Twenty bucks an hour. I and mean, that's that's cheap for mates' rates. Yeah, that's that's right. And if and if we uh, uh, work for Telstra, that'd be twenty bucks for every ten minute block. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, look, not too much happening this week. It's been just one of those boring weeks, you know, like when you start looking for stories, so this is what I do anyway, and you just see stories about Azure and who's what CEO's leaving what place and going to somewhere, you go, oh, this is going to be a boring week. And uh, yeah, I wasn't wasn't disappointed. Uh, but anyway, look, I've got my first story this week will be around the Windows 95. If you're a lover of Windows 95, I guess you've already got it still loaded up on a machine in the cupboard somewhere. But if you uh, just want to just hark back, you know, just to say, oh, Windows 95, I'll uh, I'll remember that. I wouldn't mind seeing that again. Well, there's an an app that you can get. It's been released. uh, uh, Windows 95 has been released as a standalone version of, uh, of the operating system that can run in Windows 10, Mac OS, and Linux. So it's built on the Electron cross-platform framework and written in JavaScript. Now, it's uh, called the Windows 95 version 2.0 because apparently, believe it or not, there was a version 1.0. So, um, yeah, so the guy that created it, he was one of the coders for Slack, you know, that chat program that we actually mentioned last week, which I did install, Stuart, thank you. And uh, it is working okay. So, yes, thanks for that tip there. Uh, yeah, so version 2 is released in the beginning of February of the Windows 95. Now, new features support sound, whoa, and a 500 meg of free virtual hard disk space. The app comes with uh, software including Microsoft Front Page, <laughs> yuck, Netscape 2.0, and even includes classics like Doom and Wolfenstein 3D. Now, the creator who works, yeah, we said that as this at Slack, uh, he said he doesn't want to take too much time developing it, but he will do it as time permits, develop it out further as time permits. Now, if you wish to go and grab a copy of this app, you can't find it in the Microsoft Store, which leads me to think, well, how does it authenticate? Is it a real thing or is it just a real standalone version that just is a like a some sort of like copy that doesn't need to authenticate? But it's on the GitHub. Now, there's a link in the show notes, and I'll sh- show you just quickly what a GitHub looks like just if, in case you don't know. but So what you do is you load her up from the link. There's the Windows 2.9. And just go and grab the file and uh, download it. So it looks like he's written a 32-bit and a 64-bit. Well, there's a standalone. It's for Mac OS as well. Yeah. So if you're into all that sort of stuff, yeah, yeah. And downloads for Linux. Yep. Yep. There you go. So hey, I don't know why you would go back to there. I've got no intention. I've got no need, no desire. Um, well, you if you'd gone back to three point one, you might have considered it. Three point one one, come on! I've, I've got I've got my own limitations. <laughs> but well, do you, I look? I can remember my memory goes back as far as Windows two. I can remember. Oh, seeing, mine doesn't. No. Yeah, I can remember yeah, Windows oh. two on a machine, and uh, that three point one. I think I caught a glimpse at. Oh, okay. And Windows ninety five kind of. Was like, oh, that was yesterday because I was I was Windows ninety eight. That was kind of where I kicked in. Right, right. I remember, but Windows ninety five. I remember it being very basic in in comparison to Windows ninety eight. Oh well, I guess so. It was similar. I guess I remember. Bit... Well, there was a big hoo ha, big launch, wasn't there? Because uh, not when Windows ninety five came out, it was it was a great. It was it was a fair step from Windows three point one, I guess. Mm. And um, yeah, I remember you know launched at midnight. I remember lining up at uh, lined up at Harvey Norman at Bundle there at eight o'clock in the morning. Woo, got me copy. I was laughing. <laughs> um, <laughs> I still got it. It's still in the cupboard. Uh, yeah. So yeah, there you go. So it's an app. There you have it. There, you, there you have it. Look, I did have a picture of it. Uh, for those on the video, there you go. That's a that's what it looks like. Bring back the glory days. Minesweeper. I never really got the hang of Minesweeper. Did you guys get the hang to actually play it, or I couldn't work out how to play it? Like I always got the bombs for some reason. I couldn't really, I couldn't really get they it. They should do a, uh, they should do an app, an app with XP on it. Yeah, yeah. They, well, well, you, you and then get... people can, then people can use their legacy applications, you know, like the old ones. Yeah, back uh, in... Well, I've got so much uh, XP software in the cupboard. I've got CDs. Multiple CDs full of it, you know. Like, um, remember when shareware was really popular? It was the only way oh, yeah. to get software, I guess. There's no internet, so you just had this shareware, which was uh, uh, software that was 
free. You would share it around, and it was free software. And if yeah, you, it was freeware and shareware. Yeah, the freeware was absolutely free for good. Uh, but the, the shareware share- had ads or something, didn't it? Or no, I think the shareware was more like some demos or limited software. And if you liked it, yeah. you bought it. And then and went on, but shareware was quite good. The magazines, there was magazines that used to come out with the shareware discs on the front of them. Yeah, they have discs and, in the pages. Yeah, I yeah. remember. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. What about you, Joe? What Windows do you go back to? I go back to Windows ninety five. I remember using that on very early um, three eight six machine. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. What was your, what was your first machine, Joe? What? How fast? Uh, my very first machine was a. Um, and Olivetti of all of all things. Wow, well, it was a CG, CGI monitor um, with uh, I think it was a two eight six, and it was an AT two eight six with uh, geez, can't even remember how much RAM it would have had now. Probably about four meg. Did yeah, oh, something like that, but I reckon the hard drive was only a twenty megabyte hard drive. Oh jeez, and I and I ran a small business on that for uh, one 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 or two years until I upgraded. To a four eight six. How big was the hard drive in that thing? Twenty megabytes. Ah, uh, sorry, yeah, but how physically? How big? Like, because remember those. Uh, XTs? It would have been the size, half the size of a brick. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> in in length and width, and about as half as high. Yeah, I remember pulling apart one of those old IBM XT computers, and like the hard drive must have been. <laughs> what's about that big? Yeah. What's what's that? A yeah, full brick. Right. <laughs> it's in, in yeah, case in right. some sort of like golden big. thing, and yeah, it was as heavy as all. Get out. It's amazing, isn't it, how far technology's come when you think about it in you know, a computer rooms, you know, rooms. Yeah, yeah well, that's one right. computer, basically, to, we'll, we'll, to uh, something you can fit on the end of your finger. Joe's yeah. 386. That, that, I remember buying RAM back then. That was about 100 bucks a meg. And then oh, yeah. Every, everything was way expensive back then. Mm. You know, just to get a new hard drive was hundreds of dollars. Yep. Uh, RAM was hundreds of dollars. Um, yeah. <clears throat> even even the old dot matrix printers, you know the dot matrix printers, mm. they were expensive. Like they were eight hundred, nine hundred bucks. I remember when I was the, I thought I was the in thing when I got a twenty four pin dot matrix. Everyone else was slumming it with a nine pin. <laughs> but you know, oh the good old days, eh? The good old days. All right, well let's let's move on to today, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> uh, what have you got this week for us, Joe? Well, look, I haven't had much time to get many stories. And like you said, there's not many around. It's all, you know, ghibli rubbish sort of stories just made up just to put something on paper. Mm. But what I did find interesting was um, Microsoft are saying, don't waste your money on Office 2019. Um, it's been out for a few months now, Office 2019. Mm. Um, and Microsoft is telling people, um, on a big marketing push not to buy it. Now, um, they're saying why? Because Microsoft wants you to use Office 365. Yep. Um, it says Microsoft comes right out and says that Office 2019 applications are frozen in time. They don't ever get updated with any new features, while the Office 365 includes fully installed Office applications, and these apps keep getting better and better over time yeah. and they uh, have new capabilities um, sent you know, if, as an update every month. Look, well, I, Anything to get people to spend money for their cloud version, yeah? Well, that's pretty much it. What they're saying is that then they're, they're not offering any, any um, service packs or anything like that for Office anymore. Uh, it appears that they don't want to be, or Microsoft doesn't want to be selling any anything on physical medium anymore like cds or dvds um it doesn't even want you to download the software anymore mm. um basically want you to rent a service from them you know forever and a day really like and and that's that's where everything is going yep. i mean I, I remember when i was running that business a few years back um uh not when i had the 386 when i started into the pentiums so i think i got up to pentium 2 at the time when i started running this i got um myob now, MYOB, as people know, is a, uh, a, a software for financials and doing invoices and things like that. And you could actually buy the full version back then. Yeah. Um, I think I paid somewhere like $450 for a, uh, a medium version. It oh, wasn't that a thing is... Version. It wasn't yeah, a, a, a small hard. version. Mm. I think I paid like 450 bucks back then for that. And um, look, I got to use it a few years. 
But now you can't get MYOB anymore from a download. Everything is a monthly fee. Yeah, that's right. I think, look, look I don't know. It's the same with Photoshop and that too now, isn't it? Well, that's uh, pretty yes. much right now based on well, A lot of things now, um, you know, Photoshop, um, all sorts of um, other software, they're all monthly basis now. Yeah, it will help stop pirating, doesn't it? Well, I don't really disagree with the, the subscription format too much. I think, like, because if you look, so if you were to buy the office, like this one here I just looked up at, say, it costs you, say, $200, $210 for the professional. So if you were to buy that, um, outright, okay, that's good. You can only use it on one computer. Uh, with the, when you subscribe to Office three six five, so what does it cost you? About uh, say if you're in a business environment, it might cost you. Well, I suppose it could cost you twenty. Say it costs you twenty bucks a month uh, for each person. Which so then you say you got say t- ten months, so a year before say if you had to bought the the original the the standalone, you'd have to you know say upgrade would you upgrade in a year maybe maybe not but uh you get so much more with it though with the with the office 365 you get access to a lot more software um that that, that comes that other and otherwise and features yeah look I, I don't mind it i think look it only starts getting a bit expensive say if you've got a business and you know you might need you've got 20 people uh, with email accounts but then you go just to the you just give them you subscribe for the seven dollar a month thing uh, and hopefully they don't need to use other office applications, but you know, it probably can run into a bit. It probably can. Um, yeah, I mean, but- I've, I've been using Office three uh, 2013. I mean, uh, sure, it's an old version, um, but it, it does everything I wanted to do. That had a crappy yeah. version of Outlook from memory. Pardon? Office yeah. 2013 had a crappy version of Outlook from memory. Oh, okay. No, I don't actually use the uh, Outlook on that. I use, I use mostly the Excel um, and and word and um mostly those two programs and i found you that know you can get pretty much the basics for free too can't you glenn just on on with the apps on, and and the free the free account with microsoft you can as you pointed out and enlightened me a little while ago now uh mm. yeah you just once you've got a live account you can get the excel word and whatever off on the web you base get pub, you get everything word excel publish and everything for free yeah, that's and it right. saves to your OneDrive, so and then yeah. you just get it from there. Well, that's right, because everything's gone ba- basic, um, basically back into the cloud. So, but, but I mean, the point I'll... being is the online one is it's almost identical online, isn't it, Glenn? Like mm. when you're actually using the, the the cloud version of Windows, sorry, of uh, of Word, and then you open up the actual software version of Word on your computer, they look almost identical. Yeah, I'm just going to try and log in to mine. And I'll show you. Look like. like all the buttons, everything are all, all everything's in the same place. It's all familiar. It looks the same as the actual software version itself. Yeah, that's right. They, they, they pretty much do. The only thing, the only gripe I have is that with um, the uh, you know 2013, I don't know whether Microsoft is doing something to it, but it's just making it difficult to to save stuff and to print and and I don't know if it's deliberate or whether it's something they always try and focus you towards a cloud service. So a bit like Google, I mean, you can get to use their Google Docs, but- Well, everyone says Google to, Docs is great, but I- You always have to- you have To me, it's learning a whole nother- Through the, the printers and stuff like that, you always have to go through Google and it's just wrecks havoc. I mean, unless to me, you- I think I, I like being with software I'm familiar with. I hate having to learn new software. So going to Google Docs is just having to learn something new. Mm. Well, look, I'm going through my Microsoft phase again, Jordan. So <laughs> yeah. it's easy to go back to because you know it, you know. And my, and this, the Microsoft Office has always been a cross-platform thing. If you know, I can, apart, if, apart from if, if I can get my screen to and my thing to figure out how to get there, I'll, I'll show you how to what it looks like online. But um, I don't even know how to how to bring it up. Just go to log into Microsoft well, into your email. Just go to email, your Outlook email, just Microsoft email, or whatever, and then just click the hamburger button. Yeah, I, I can do it from here. Yep. Yeah. All right. So we'll go. Hang on. In my email. Click the hamburger button in the left corner, I think, and or something like that, and then, um, and then yeah, you can just use OneDrive or Word or yeah. whatever. Oh my God! Sign in. 
How crazy is it? Yeah, but anyway, this is what it looks like. So you've got here. Oh, yeah. you're in there. You go. Yeah. You just had you just had Outlook and Word and everything there. Yeah. So what? you can choose whatever you want. You can go Excel. So you, you got... click on Word and then open a document, and it looks the same. Yeah. It's, it looks identical to. Um... And you get things like I looked at this thing that I've never heard of. I went, "What's this sway?" And so I started looking at sway, and you think, "Oh, that might be something I might even want to have a look at." It's like a publishing tool. Uh, a presentation creation tool. So, you know, that's all just available. See that little square icon on the top left corner with the little dots? Yeah. Yeah, that one. There you go. Yeah, it's good. There so, it is. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, because, look, another another good tip that came to me through the week, I forget who told it to me, but anyway, someone, because I've, I've heard of this Trello. Never tried it. I don't know if you guys, have you guys tried it or heard of it? I have heard of Trello, yeah. I've not used it, though. No, because like I've been trying varying, various different to-do list applications and everything, and I just couldn't find one that worked. Then I tried OneNote to see if I could do a to-do, to-do list in OneNote. That was a bit yucky. Uh, and someone got, told me about Trello, and you know what? I think this is this is it. This is, this is it for me. I think I like it. So if you're looking for a to-do list, I'll show you what it looks like quickly. I just like everything, having all the services in one place. That's why I force myself to use one uh, one note for to-do notes and stuff like that, lists and things. Well, I've, I sat down today and, and looked at OneNote videos because I thought I, I was going to go back to Evernote. Uh, but I went, you know, I'm going to give OneNote one more go. And so I looked at a video and I went, mm, I can handle that. You know, I can handle that now that you know. Now that you know what you, how to do a little bit of it, I'm I'm right. But this Trello, uh, so it's like you set up everything, like your little cards. They're like sticky notes on your desktop, a lot nicer. And you can integrate this with Outlook as well. So you can send emails to it and create tasks in Trello from it. You get, yeah, so it's good. That's my little tip anyway. Got a lot of tips. Yeah, so we're going to be looking at that as well sometime. But like I said, I just like mm. having... I get sick of having to have registered accounts for everything, you know, like you've got to have a registered account for your to-do list and a registered account for Microsoft and a registered account for Google and a registered account for this. Well, how do you do all these logins, usernames and passwords for all these different places? I think that's where I kind of get stuck in the, in the Microsoft kind of, you know, world hoping that everything I need is in one place. So do you use OneNote for your to-do list? Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, I didn't like the way it I works. I can make like little check boxes and all sorts yeah, of Yeah, but the check boxes, when you tick them, they don't disappear. Well, that's what I found. I thought, oh, if I well, tick it. Well, they're not it. meant to. They're check boxes. <laughs> well, I meant like as in check it off as you've done that task. Yeah, you're supposed to untick it. You don't delete it. You just untick it. Well, I want it to move away. I want it to but go If you're going to move it away, delete the line. Well, but that's an extra step. That's an extra click. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea of a checkbox is that it's checked on or off. It's not yeah. supposed to be disappeared. I'll just you want it, you, uh, trust you, Glenn, to want something that's different <laughs> than everybody else has. But anyway, I found Trello. So I know you <laughs> guys Trello, out there. When you, you untick it, does it delete the box, does it? Well, is that what it's all come down to? Well, yep, you can delete just by going <laughs> click. <laughs> and then it, that, but it's nice <laughs> and neat. You can look. probably right click on that checkbox and delete it. Yeah. I'd imagine. But anyway, the, I think I found it. I'm good. The, uh, Alan's saying on, on the Facebook feed, uh, you should sure try and get the app and put it on your phone as well. Yes, I probably will do that as well. Thank you, Alan. Yes, yes, yes. I didn't, I've, I've actually only got into the Trello yesterday, believe it or not. And I've downloaded the Windows because I didn't like, I don't like these apps either that sort of that use a tab of your browser uh, for some reason. Call me weird. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I, I, there was a Windows 10 app which I like better because I like it to be down on the taskbar. I can bring it up and down whenever I need. And the browser is purely just for browsing. So weird, I know. Well, Alan Alan also says to use Microsoft for your tasks as well. See, he's, he's got the right. He's using Microsoft. Oh, uh, what? Well, Glenn? Is that, Glenn? Yes. <laughs> yeah, good, good. What's Microsoft? Is that what it's called? Tasks? Yeah, yeah. this is Microsoft Tasks. Yeah. I think I tried that. Um is that what it's called? I can't. I've never. I don't know if I've seen that or not. And there's another one, Wonderlist, which I think. Oh, Microsoft, that's rubbish. I think Microsoft bought Wonderlist. Yes, list, they, they did. I think. And it's rubbish. I didn't like it. Task. Yeah, I had Wonderlist. It was just too hard. Oh, Microsoft Planner. There we go. Is that what it's called? The Teams. I didn't like because they may have changed the name of Tasks to Planner. Yeah, I don't know. But Teams, I've never even looked at. Yeah, I didn't like Teams. You couldn't if you were if you were in one organization and you wanted to talk to someone in another organization, you had to sign out of your organization, sign into the. Uh, I think I said that last week. It was just rubbish. So got rid of that. 
But uh, look, the planner might be all right. I've never really, really gone in. Oh, see, there's another one I've never seen before. Is it's a planning application? It's on the three six five platform. The application is available to premium business and education. On June the 6th, made the application available for general release. Planner enables users and teams to create plans, assemble and assign tasks, share files, communicate and collaborate with others, and receive progress updates via various means on the 365 platform. Each new plan created in Planner automatically creates a new Office 365 group. So that might be handy for people. Hmm. Might have to look at but that you one know too. What? Slight, just slightly off topic, but you know how you just said before you hate when things put in tabs? Yeah, was it? you said. You said. No. I've got a little bit of a, a bone to pick with Microsoft. I could add to that. Microsoft. I wish they would allow us to pin those tabs to the taskbar. Yes. Never been able to in Windows Seven. I'm sure you could do it. You could drag your taskbar, and sorry, drag your tab down to your taskbar, and it would pin it. So yes. you'd have like a URL shortcut to the main website you use all the time with an icon on your taskbar. And yes, those ten. I think, but can't you do that? Can't you? I've never been able to put like my banking website on the taskbar or any web apps. I might use that. annoys me. Speaking just of put it in your favorites bar, there, Jordan. Put it in your favorites. Yeah, but I didn't bar. want it in my favorite bar. I want it. I want it in my taskbar. But what about? But can't... So when you click on it, you're not actually clicking up. You're not actually clicking and opening up your internet and then going to your your, your favourites bar. I want it there as an icon, like it's software. Like can't you say? I'm not sure if it'll work for Chrome. Uh, I don't know if it. Well, it might. But you can pin. You can. You used to be able to pin them in seven. You could, you yeah. know, pin pin a shortcut, a URL shortcut, straight to your taskbar. I think you can still pin it to the uh, to the icon on the taskbar. Then you right click on the icon, and then. It pops up with all the pinned addresses. I'm pretty sure you can still do that. Don't ask me how you how you actually do the pinning, but um, I so think... you're saying create a shortcut on your desktop? I don't even think you can do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can create a shortcut on your desktop. You reckon? Well, from oh, a, yeah, a cool. yeah, from a URL. Yeah. But you, I could just just grab the grab the yeah tab drag and... it drag it to drag the desktop. It. No, oh, not the tab. You've got to drag the uh, where the say the lock is on the say you're on Firefox, you drag drag it from there from the yeah. where the lock is. See how it's changed there. You actually I'm drag it from Chrome the address bar. There's no, there's no URL in Google Chrome. Well, you haven't got it turned on properly. Hang on. No, nah, I just dragged one over and it says no. It's got a big red circle with an arrow in it. it says you can't do it. <laughs> no, you can. I've just done it. You can. I'll talk to you, you after the show. You can't even drag it to the desktop from the URL bar. Dab. Ah, I'll talk can't pin no, I can't. could show you a video of it, or I'll show you later. I have never been able to do it. Yeah, you can. The only thing that annoys me with doing it that way is... Because I've got my local server, and I'd love to just put a shortcut straight to my local yeah. server login page, bang, and you I don't do. have to go on open internet or anything. It's you dead. can. I've got, I've got shortcuts on my... Uh, um, in your taskbar. Well, on my desktop, at least. Uh, to, yeah, and uh, can you put them in your taskbar, can you? Uh, well, okay, let me have a, let me have a shot. Pin to yeah, I can pin it to the Google Chrome, and then can yes. you pin it to the taskbar? Yes, yes. The answer is yes. I've just done it. Okay. So I'll well, show you. Get desktop first. I'll show you how to do it later. All right. Um, it'll work for me. All right. Geez. Never has. Well, geez, we went off on a tangent with that one, Joe. We went off on a tangent over Microsoft and their tabs. <laughs> well, yeah. Look, just in finishing off that one story, apparently the next step from here is that they reckon that Windows is going to be used. Pretty much the same way. You know how they're not doing any version updates anymore? Yep. Well, the go is they reckon that Microsoft is going to be um, switching over to a Chrome OS style of Windows. No. Um, well, that's what they reckon is happening. They've been saying it for ever since Windows 10. Um, and yeah. they're not going to have any more standalone versions where everyone's going to have to be paying monthly rather than just paying a once-off fee. That's where they're going to go with it, they reckon. Yeah. I don't well, know. They may do a they may do a subscription base for it, but it won't be cloud based. They won't put like look. They I, won't make it all cloud based. I think like, like Google Chrome. I think Windows will find itself if it hasn't found itself there already. Is that it's not the flagship anymore for Microsoft. Windows it's sort of come down. So like because like if you start charging for for uh, Windows, you're going to have people out there that are you know they're going to go and do the Linux or they might go and get a Mac or something. 
but surely, surely, like you know how you you know in a supermarket they might have the loss leader products. So, you know, so they might make a loss on one product to get you in to buy something else. Well, I reckon because yeah. Microsoft Cloud, remember the stories over the last couple of weeks, their cloud business is booming like out of their control. Cloud business is booming, yeah. Like, so w- wouldn't they sacrifice, say, some Windows development just for people to be able to still use the Windows, stay in the Microsoft environment, and hopefully use the Azure at the same time? Like, I can't mm. see they'd want to want to meddle with that, but you never know. They're pretty money hungry. You never know. I don't think they'd go. I don't think they'd go completely cloud-based OS, though, would they? Oh. Well, it's a, it's a bit like Chrome OS. I've not used it. I've actually downloaded a um, an install, and when I'm going to install it, I was going to install it this week, but apparently because of my computer playing up, I didn't end up doing it. I might have to install it on an old laptop or something. Um, but apparently, um, it's going to be running similar to the Chrome OS, where you can just download it. And, and it runs in one window and everything runs within the window. Hmm. And then once they start getting it to that level, then they'll start accessing uh, subscription services to it. So you can well, pay as I've much as little as you want. OS, but from what I gather, it's it's very similar to kind of Android, isn't it? With the apps and the app store. and As long as they don't take the power of the operating system away. Well, I think right. that's what will happen if they do it with the cloud hmm. plus You've got to have you've got to have some sort of local operating system for it to run. If it requires internet all the time, I don't I don't don't get it. Mm. Um, all right, mm. let's uh, move on. Uh, Jordan, did you have anything this week? Were you pretty light on? Um, I did, but I couldn't get it to pin the taskbar. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> no, I did. I had a couple of stories. It was um, I had one here. I kind of just found this while I was munching on my dinner. I think you guys texted me and said, you ready yet? And I said, yeah, I'm eating and looking for stories at the same time. Google to release a Pixel Watch, oh. a new Google Home and a Nest camera alongside a budget Pixel 3 phones, which we've heard about, haven't we? So, so the- last year we heard rumours of a Pixel Watch to be released alongside the Pixel 3 phones, but that did not eventuate and apparently due to delays. Did now you say Microsoft was releasing it? No, Google. Okay, sorry. Did I say Microsoft, oh. mate? I said Microsoft, but I think I was meant to say Google. Yeah, because I just started. Google Pixel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what I'm going to I was just about to say, geez, that's a bit uh, tight, isn't it, to, to Google's product? But anyway, yeah, it's up anyway, here. sorry. Well, that may have been because we've had Microsoft on my mind. I may have said Microsoft. I have to go back and have a listen, but I was oh, could have matter. said Pixel. Anyway, <laughs> now, <laughs> now there is a report that it will be released this year alongside a host of other new Googly hardware devices. Googly? Googly. Is that the official word? <laughs> yeah, well, that's what it, Googly. That's what this guy says in his article. Oh, right, um, right. Don't know if he's trying to start a trend. Anyway, so Google related rumors and reports in the past. Uh, where, where were we? Uh, today is reporting that not only will Google be releasing new budget Pixel 3 Lite phones, but also some other interesting hardware. The budget Pixel phones are no surprises. We've even seen hands-on videos of them in recent times as Google attempts to draw more use users uh, into its ecosystem. It's expected to be priced lower than Apple's cheapest iPhone. Uh, sources also reported that new smart speakers, wearables, and web cameras, uh, cameras will be arriving this year, as well as the premium Pixel 4. Right. Mm. There's a little mention of the Pixel Watch alongside... Sorry, there's a little mention of the Pixel Watch aside from its existence. The mm. reports. Well, apparently, apparently uh, Google's bought Fossil, the company Fossil, for about $40 million. Well, that must be where it's coming from because Fossil... Yeah, so apparently Fossil, they're Fossil's going to be watch. probably taking over the Fossil you know, hardware and software division and start producing their Pixel Watch via that. Yeah, I'd say so. Mm. A bit like Microsoft with their Nokia. Mm, interesting. So if you got a if you got a Pixel, so phone, Google Home will also be updated according to the report, and it's unclear whether this means an entirely new speaker or just updated specs to the old one. But we expect Google to bring an entirely new speaker with the same design cues as the original, and the new web camera from Google will occur with rebranding of Nest after it has been integrated into Google's hardware team. Yeah, okay. uh, this is no surprise either as Google attempts to bring all its hardware under a single banner for the better brand recognition. Mm. All right. Uh, so there you go. Yeah. So, I'm still on Pixel 1. I haven't even tried Pixel 2 or 3 yet. 
Look, I've got a uh, moving along. I've got a story about YouTube and Vimeo. Like I, you guys would have heard of Vimeo, I'm sure. Bit yeah. of a bit of a YouTube rival, bit of more of a professional platform where you got to actually pay uh, to have that upload your stuff. But you'll find it like you know when you search for a music clip or something, a lot of a lot of clips will be out now on Vimeo. Uh, look, I don't know, like YouTube. Look, YouTube's still good, but do you get the feeling that it's starting to get really overcrowded just with rubbish? You know, like it's hard to find stuff of, of relevance and, and so forth. Uh, well, anyway, the, the story's nothing about that. But anyway, the story's about the... <laughs> but Vimeo. I agree with you. Yes, the, the Vimeo revenue has jumped 54% in 2018. So the on, so which maybe a lot of other people think maybe think the same way as well. And well, if you've got a... Uh, you know, if you're running a business and you want to embed a video onto your homepage, for some reason, it's the, the Vimeo player. It's just got a better, uh, 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 a better. Uh, I was going to say a better stigma, but look, I suppose you could use that term. Yeah, a, a better stigma than the YouTube embed. Uh, but anyway, so uh, Vimeo was founded in 2004, and it caters largely to business customers who pay anywhere from 84 US to 900 a year to upload and use a professional high end the high definition videos on an ad free platform. Uh, it's uh, 2018 revenue is 160 million US dollars. And this apparently has been disclosed for the first time. Now this rose from 103 million in the past previous year. Uh, the number of playing, paying subscribers climbed 9% year over year uh, to about 952,000 by the end of December. So look, it's no, it's no. So uh, these paying subscribers, so, so Vimeo, is really used to embed videos on external locations, is it, or, or is it, it's browse, or is it just as browsable, I suppose, as, as YouTube for the client? And, yeah, and it's just look, I'll, I'll for bring, the consumer, so to speak. Yeah, well, let me uh, search this. And because I've never really, I mean, usually if I'm looking for you know some tutorials or something, some videos of some sort, I just go straight to YouTube and search it, and it comes up. I don't usually go to Vimeo and, and search. Yeah, but, but if I you, assume it's the same kind of rule of thumb. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, like, so um, is there ads for us. Well, let's have a look. Search when for, browsing. Oh, I don't know. Let's, well, who who do we want to search for? Let's search for I don't know. Computer fix. See what happens. See what happens with the typing computer fix. Do we get a hit? Yep. There we go. So Chromebook fix dad's computer. Okay. Let's click on the first one. And yeah. So there you go. There's a video. No ads. Well, there shouldn't be because apparently all these are paid for. So, yeah. So the businesses pay to upload them so we can watch them without ads is basically the, is it the yeah. kind of way it goes? I, I, that's from yeah. what I'm gathering, yeah. So there we go. So the that's the big question is whether everything's on there. Oh, well, not everything. Like, what? Well, no. like, what? Give me something. Well, give me. Type, a... type in jammy guitar. How do you spell it? J A W M? J A W M Y. Jammy guitar. It probably is. It's my new toy I've been waiting for. I still haven't got it yet. There you go. Oh, still? What's going on? Yeah, it's they've designed and redesigned it in a few different ways. But anyway. There he is. No, that's not a jammy guitar. Oh, guitar jammy jam. Oh, no, it's, it's a jammy just... guitar. That's just a guitar just... jammy. <laughs> yeah, jammy guitar. Here we go. Yeah, that one there's an old one. It doesn't look like that anymore. That's a really old video. They've, uh, they've completely redesigned it. Right. So, yeah. It's not there. No, well, the, there's, there's only it's not, not everything's going to be there because it's not as big as YouTube. No. But no, yeah, but that's, that's just right. another platform. And the reason yeah. I brought it up was just just to show that there are other platforms out there, uh, and YouTube yeah. is just not the only platform. There's also Daily Motion, I think, which is not too bad. There's a lot of stuff there that isn't on YouTube. Um, but but yeah, like there's just a lot of other stuff. There's more platforms around. Uh, you know, and, and maybe not as many well, takedown notices. I think, like notices. you said, a lot of businesses like it because, in, I mean, everybody knows when you embed a YouTube video even on your own website, you still get the ads from mm. YouTube on your own website. So if you're a business and you don't want those ads, of course you're going to pay Vimeo to not have ads on your website. Yeah. Because, so, I don't know, that sometimes... That kind of makes sense for the business user for sure. Because sometimes, I'm not sure what YouTube does now, but uh, I think when you embed a video onto YouTube, I think they put their... Yeah, they bring their logo and everything across, and then sometimes you can't make the video in, embed full screen, and, and I think there's a couple of issues with the YouTube and things you can and can't do. But yeah, so with Vimeo, maybe they've been uh, been rectified. Now, uh, well, being a web developer, I'm sure you've used you've embedded a few Vimeo videos. 
Uh, no, just YouTube actually. Because I have <laughs> embedded a couple of Vimeo ones myself. Yeah, right, right. No, I've only but a while well, ago, a long time ago. I must only work for Cheapskates because I've never done a Vimeo. So I'm sure it's just no. Well, the, the company I built a web was building and maintaining a website for a music company, a teaching company, and they had a lot of videos embedded in Vimeo for their tutorials and things in the back end for their students. Mm. Yeah. Yes. All right. Now. So moving on. Yes. Uh, Joe, did you have any more, or that, that do you want me to keep going with my stuff? No, that's fine. I mean, if, if you're if you're done, we can talk about my little problem. We've got nothing else. I had uh, I had a little Valentine's Day one. Oh, you do your Valentine. I've got one more that I want to talk about. So you do your Valentine. It's not a very, it's not a hugely overexciting article. It's just because it's Valentine's Day. I thought I've got to have a Valentine's Day story. How can we not? Okay. You know, we're all here and our wives are where? So. In the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, you didn't say that. They're, they're thinking, why aren't we out there watching movies with them? Anyway, it's Valentine's Day and tech heads have taken over our relationship. Oh, all right. Or tech, I won't say tech heads. Tech has taken over our relationships, not tech heads. That's us. We haven't taken over any relationships. <laughs> we take over people's relationships. <laughs> so, uh, where were we? Uh, if you had to explain dating in 2019 uh, to a time traveler from the 1950s, what would you say? Uh, I would explain texting first and how it takes five minutes now for people to decide they want to hook up, says uh, comedian Nikki. Glacier. I would tell women, buckle up, the arch, if you can say that on YouTube. Uh, this is not going to be a fun ride. Uh, Glacier or Glaser, G L A S E R, I don't know, it's a Glacier. Uh, 34 has made a professional study of dating sites like Tinder. A Glacier, uh, that sounds like when you go to the pub and he's like, he'll smash a glass in your face. A Glacier. <laughs> and Tinder. <laughs> And the hookup culture that ex that uh, experts say has reshaped many people's sex lives. It provides uh, lots of fodder for her comedy routine. I don't even need to know why we needed to know anything about her. Anyway, for the past generations, relationship milestones meant things like going steady. Today's relationships can strike up uh, after a few minutes of texts and chats. And since nearly everything is done using an app on a phone, you can have a relationship with someone and never hear their voice. Yeah, well, that's that's right. You've seen that. Uh, so this is dating in the modern age. Having fun yet? <laughs> What's that show on the Foxtel where they uh, someone falls in love over Facebook or something and then they, they get these two guys in and they go and see if the person is real or not? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I forget the name of that show now. It's um... They fell in love with Cortana. Yeah. And then oh, they... you're thinking of that, not that movie, was it? No, there's a TV show and then the, the, they'll, get, they'll hunt down and say... Uh, the person um, who's responding. Uh, so there's, yeah. So so there's person A who has been co corresponding to person B in say and got caught up in this lo in in love. So person A doesn't know whether person B exists. They've never met because it's all been done over the internet. And it's oh I love you, I love you. Um, wish we could come and get together, but oh, I can't this weekend. There's always an excuse. And so the, the guys come in. They do a research on person B and try and get to the bottom of and try and get to actually meet the person. And sometimes that's just not, that's not a real person, you know? Um, oh, I forget the name of it, but anyway, anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's how it goes. Well, that says that in this um, thing, it says that with all the stuff it's um, I'll try and finish the article. It says dating apps are so uh, commonplace now that swipe right uh, the way you, you like someone on Tinder has become part of our everyday language. Now, swipe right now means anytime you make a good choice or approve of something according to Urban Dictionary. Uh, the internet has been trans uh, transformational to the way we have relationships. Uh, I'm trying to skip ahead. Um, Uh, TV show Married with First Sight. Oh, look, it, it just rambles on a bit here, but exactly what you just said, how people falling in love with people who aren't really there or... You know. yeah. 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 But speaking of, of that, did you ever see the movie Her? No. Have a look at that, Her, from 2013. It's on IMDb. It's rated 8.0. 8. 8. Some people may have seen it. That was a great movie. It was about a guy that fell in love with an, an AI in his phone. And he, he was just over the moon in love with this phone. He was always talking to his phone. 
Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and it, it really puts a really good spin on on that kind of modern technology. It sounds a, a bit great like, movie. It sounds like a bit like Electric Dreams. Um, uh, and because I'm terrible with actors' names, what's what was his name? Where is it? Uh, Joe Quinn Phoenix. Is that how you say it? Joe Quinn Phoenix? Oh, I don't know. Never heard of him. He's a main actor. Yeah, okay. say Jacqueline, Jacqueline, J O A Q U I N. Hmm, don't know. You'd know him if you saw his face on IMDb, but look that up. But anyway, so um, what were you, hey, yeah, yeah, I was just going to say, uh, yeah, my my story this 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 other story I had was, uh, a is there a possible threat to Fortnite? There's a new game apparently just been released, Apex. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, because I know uh, I've, or, my kids have already downloaded Apex. So that's yeah, they kept I, nagging me as well. Yeah, right. That's how I knew about it. Uh, so it's a new Battle Royale game. So over two, it has over 2 million concurrent players already and over two, 25 million downloads in the first week. So it was released last Friday. Uh, Apex's new spin as the game been, has been taking the world by storm. Apex Legends is available on Xbox, PlayStation uh, and free to download. This is like an ad. Uh, Fortnite has now over 200 million players. Uh, Fortnite was released in 17, 2017. Uh, Apex has 60... Well, how the game in Apex works is probably pretty similar. You've got to go fight people. But as Fortnite, you can go one-on-one. But Apex, apparently, you are forced into squads of three. And uh, instead of sharing the, the battle world with 100 people or 99 others, you'd share it with 60. So, yeah, whatever. Whatevs. But, uh, look, let's uh, <laughs> let's get into... Okay. Uh, I had another story, but no, it's, it's, it's funny because my, my boy was playing Fortnite flat out, and um, only because he's been nagging me for the Spider Man game, and we don't have a PlayStation Four, and then a friend of ours gave us a PlayStation Four that wasn't wasn't turning on, and so I managed to fix it, and then uh, found out that the switch had buckled inside and it wasn't touching the the. Um, the the terminal inside to turn the thing on and off that so somehow bent out of the way so I opened up straight now turn it back on and with tears of joy this PlayStation came on and then his mate just gave him the PlayStation gave him Spider Man and ever since then he's forgotten about Fortnite yeah right well, there you so go. I don't know how how it is but he just loves Spider Man I don't know how addictive that is but I know I know but anyway let's um... Let's get Good on game. the Joe's problem before we finish up, so we can hopefully get a. Uh, and what about have a look through the any uh, comments on the Facebook? It's anyone that we need to address? So Joe, tell us about your, uh, your your issue. Okay, so what's happened is like I was saying when we first started the show that a few days ago my computer started booting up and I got three screens um, with only one screen coming on. So I would uh, turn it off again, go move some video cards turn it back on and then eventually it'll come back on and it'll be okay for a while. Um, but only just last night, uh, it started to, uh, all three, all three video cards, uh, all three monitors will come on. Um, but after a period of say two or three minutes, uh, doesn't matter what I'm doing, it would just freeze and freezing the whole three screens and the mouse, would move okay, not a problem. It'll move between you know, screen one, screen two, screen three, not a problem. You couldn't click on anything, um, but it was there. You couldn't escape, you couldn't click shut down. You had to hard re- hard reset the button. You had to push the button in the front to close it down. Mm, you couldn't. So yeah, that's that's the problem. You couldn't control or delete, that wouldn't work either? No. Um, the keyboard didn't work? No. Um, I, I couldn't click on any guys on Facebook. I, I couldn't actually click on anything to to be able to try that. So right, right. Um, one one of the guys, Nick, on Facebook asked if uh, if your screen goes black after the login screen. No, the screen doesn't go black after the login. What the mouse do it? It actually once you log in, it boots up as per normal, and you could go and browse the web, watch YouTube, do whatever, and um, and then all of a sudden it just stops. You haven't run out of space in your hard drive? No, I, I checked that earlier on. Um, virtual memory? I've got about 30 not, gigs still your left. Virtual memory is not too small? Say that again? Your virtual memory? I haven't checked the virtual, virtual memory, but I don't think bar. that would be a problem, though. Well, sometimes. Depends if how small it is. I reckon, not, I reckon if you can, go and get yourself there's another, another way you can get. There's another way you can get card. three screens, though, without having to stress about it. Just... 
Yeah, yeah. Alan's just saying in the uh, Facebook feed to take the additional uh, video cards out, which I have taken them both out, and I've um, I've run the uh, the computer directly on the motherboard um, connector, and it still does the same thing. Yes, uh, right. So you took the card out. Yeah, and... there was there was two of them in there. I took them both out. Yep. And... Um, and connected the one monitor. Yep. Directly to the motherboard. Yep. Um, did the and same then thing. you'll um, the uh, it still did exactly the same thing. How many hard drives you got in there? I have two hard drives in there. Maybe you just got to start stripping it all back, I guess. So maybe take yeah, out you, the, the hard. Usually that's the go. Yeah, take out the hard drive that's the data drive, not the boot drive, and then maybe take out all the RAM chips except one. Maybe put that RAM chip, try it in different slots. Um, maybe just swap the RAM again, like this, so you got one in there, but swap another bit that you took out and just leave it as the number one in there. Um, but other than that, I would, after that, if you're still stuck, maybe you could get, get another, you got an old hard drive somewhere that still works that you don't use. Maybe throw... Did you try, did you try the Ubuntu USB today, like I said? I haven't tried that yet. Um, basically, once I, um... I started playing around with it today. I had to stop because otherwise I wouldn't be able to get online tonight. I just started setting up the laptop so that I could be online. Yeah, so I reckon get a, if you get another hard drive, like if you've got one laying around, and then just install Windows onto it and just see how it runs. It might, yeah, you might just I, need another install. Alan, Alan reckons I might have a power supply issue. Yeah, um, yeah that was the other thing yeah. I said to you today. Yeah, it, it could be. Um I did mention that to you today. I said it power could be anything. Power supply could be hard drive, could be multiple things. Yeah, but see, the thing is that the mouse still moves. It's not a problem. So would a, would a power supply cause that? It could. It might not be getting enough power to... Yeah, it can be underpowered. Like, you can have a power yeah. a power surge and not blow the the, the power supply completely. Okay. So this that's is... why taking out some of your hard drives, and this... things like that will take some of that power strain off. And then things might start working again. Get one of these, so, Joe. Just to one thing I did try and do is that um, after I power supply. after I put the the video cards out, I uh, I let the machine boot and let it stay at the login screen without actually logging in, and it froze there too. Oh right, right. Okay. What about can you? Oh, I don't know. Take that further. Can you boot up into the command prompt? Will it still freeze? In command prompt, I've tried. To, I've tried the uh, the uh, the safe mode. Boot it into safe mode, mm. and the same thing happens in safe mode. Right. Yeah, you got to start looking. Uh, and before you so, um, start, could be an update as well. That um, is the screen going blank? No, uh, no, the screen's not going blank. Um, Corey, when um, when the when I boot up the machine, the screen and everything access per normal. I can run apps um like you know i run my antivirus and whatever it else but then it just stops after about two or three minutes look i think whoever said the power supply is it could be right because like underpowered or whatever busted power supplies they can do some real weird things i had to your computer. i had a problem with my computer for a, for a long time and um you know hard drives dropping in and out i, I even replaced a couple of hard drives back in the day thinking you know, and I even took them back to the shop and said, there's things wrong with them. And they're like, there's nothing wrong with them. And then I found out later that I had too many hard drives plugged in and it was not enough power getting to the hard drives, you know. So, so you need a bigger power supply. So the first thing I did is went out and bought a really good power supply. I've had no problem since. Mm. So running multiple screens and videos and multiple hard drives, you'd be surprised how quickly you use up the power in your power supply. Yeah, because you've got two two uh video cards so that that choose it so what what size is your power supply do you know uh look off the top of my head i don't know but it's one of those 400 or 450 watts uh, that it might could be a be, bit small i i have it was something i bought maybe five or six years ago that's four but again it could also be soft, it could also be software related you know yeah look, look, uh, my, my way of thinking is that, i think i think it could be the um the graphics gpu yeah um I've had similar problems to like this in the past and I've had to replace the motherboard because the first thing first thing you should always do is is software first. You don't need to rush out and replace your hardware to you sure. You always make sure your software is is right first. Yeah. 
don't go out and spend money buying, you know, new motherboards, new video yeah. cards. No, that's right. I mean, Corey, Corey's saying on the Facebook here that if I've got a spare power supply, and yes, I do have a, power, a spare power supply, um, and I, I I'll stick use, that in I would get tomorrow that, or the day after yeah. when I get a chance and see how that goes. I would get that Ubuntu Live USB and run that up and see if it freezes. Yeah, that's another good idea. Because, I, you know, I, I if, might just run the Ubuntu just to rule out any like hardware issues like you were saying today, Jordan. Well, Maybe there's a, a hardware issue. Just main, run well, hardware just, issue or um, even software for that matter. Yeah, not just that. It's more the software. Yeah, if, if the software is freezing or, or anything like that, whether it's a task. Have you looked in the task manager when it's frozen? Or have you had Can't the task there. manager open and watched the watch the memory and, and everything and CPU usage before it freezes? No, I haven't done that, no. Because you could open that up and just let it sit there and see what's chewing up the RAM and the memory. And, we could and then go. maybe let it just sit frozen for like a half an hour and see if it comes back on. You could go no, all out and look in the event. It doesn't come back. Off. Yeah, yeah I, reckon, I reckon do the power supply first. Check it. Check that. Did you see what I flashed up before? Get one of those. You'll be able to get that next week. Posted. That's $14. And that'll tell you what the power supply is doing. So, um, yeah, until it puts it under load, though, does it put it under load or does it just measures the output? That's the big problem, isn't it? They measure well, the I don't, output, I don't put it under load. I mean, at first, when, at first, when I started getting the problem of the computer freezing, I was watching YouTube videos and I'm thinking to myself, oh, okay, now it's starting to buffer. It, it has the same sort of thing, it sort of starts to buffer and then it stopped. So, I, I stopped watching YouTube and I just did a, a virus scan just to check for viruses and about three minutes into the scan, the computer stopped. Sounds like a heat problem to me, but, but look, it could be. I reckon it's just, supply. it's, I reckon it's just something bogging down. I reckon you've, you've got software or something that, or memory, a memory leak or something like that. Do you have, um, it's all, yeah, it's all. If it was, if it was overheating, usually a computer will shut down if it overheats. That's right. Yeah. I don't think it's an overheating problem. I, I, my, my, my personal thoughts are that the GPU on the on the motherboard is gone, and it's so just causing all these sort of problems. So try disabling. Have you tried disabling the onboard mother the, the onboard video in the BIOS? It doesn't matter. It's still require you still require the onboard GPU to run even any video on 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 the on the machine. I, I don't think you you can just disable that and it'll work. You can put another video card in and then disable the onboard one. Yeah, but still, still doesn't doesn't the motherboard still require the GPU to, to process the power? No, I think you can still disable it. I don't think it really matters. But um, but I think I'm not too sure how that. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I it can disable. It sounds, it's yeah. it's either the video or a memory leak. I, I... Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you on that, Glenn. I don't think it matters if you disable it or it it, it still runs anyway. Yeah, you might. Yeah, I think it might. You might have a setting. You might disable it here and in, in a somewhere, but it has to always remain uh, some sort of active. Because if you if you need to, like you chuck your external cards away, well, you still need to be able to plug something in, don't you? If that's what the board was meant but if for. It's, if it's disabled on the board, yeah, I think you uh, can. the operating system's not going to read it. Yeah, I think that's right. I think you're right. Oh, I can't remember. You but, can't you, you can't really disable it because I think that once you disable it, then you shouldn't get any. Any um, any boot up like you won't see anything up on a boot up screen before you hit the operating yeah, system. It just flicks over to the the other one that you've got in. That's right. So you can't really disable it. Um, if you do that, then you shouldn't get anything. No, if you disable the video card on in your in your BIOS, it'll just automatically flick over to the video card that you've got plugged in 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 your in your PCI Express slot. Yeah, mm. yeah. No, you can't. You can. I just you just disable it. Yeah. If, if you can, some of them don't have the disable feature, but if you can, and you're worried about the onboard video being a problem, disable the onboard video so the operating system doesn't even know it's there. All and right, well, I, I have to go and look for that. I'm, I just have to go into the BIOS and have a look, but I'm pretty sure mine, it's it's an up-to-date BIOS, so it should have that feature. And, and uh, if, if all else fails, I have to try and do that. Yeah. What's that screen you've got there, uh, oh, It's a video. It's a video of the, someone changing BIOS settings. Yeah, on board. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. So anyway, I reckon. Um, yeah, try try that. Try your power supply. Uh, try another hard drive. Try and load Windows up onto it. Try <laughs> try everything. Joe. Well, that's try what I said. Chucking basically Ubuntu. chucking Ubuntu yeah. on a USB is is is, and then yeah. is alleviating that. You you're removing software issues 
But, you know, there's also the fact that if there's an issue with the motherboard, that the USBs may give you a problem and then that USB could freeze anyway. Hmm. So but, it could be a motherboard issue. You just don't know. I'd be... Another question, If I now, now that I've got you guys on, um, a friend of mine rang me today and said that he was having problems with um, not being able to back up his phone to his computer, saying that his hard drive is full. But apparently his hard drive is not really full because he knows that the hard drive was like, okay, and it's just reading that it's full. Is there any, um, any ideas what to look for for that? So where's it? What's saying it's full? What's what's? He, he goes to play. He, it it looks like it's full, but he's saying that it's not really full. Oh, so Windows is saying it's showing full. Yeah, but he reckons it's not really full, and I haven't been there to have a look at it yet. But I'm just thinking, is that right? Like if Windows says it's full, then it's full, or is it could be something ghost somewhere or something backed up, double backed up, or something like that? Well, I guess. Oh. That's, I've never heard of it. No, it's a bit of a weirdo. But you could do you could do a system disk clean, not just a standard disk clean. You got to I think you got to you got to go into disk clean and then you've got to do uh, you've got to hold the shift key and do and do the next clean. Well, or you've have got a look. To get another button in there that says system clean, and then that'll clean out any uh, like old Windows editions that you know, like if Windows is updated it'll often leave a Windows old folder on your C drive and things like that, which can take up gigs and gigs and gigs of space. Look at so, his, yeah. look at his yeah. petitions. I, I haven't had a chance to have a look at it yet, but he just, you know, rang me today. He goes, well, what do you think, Joe? What do you think the problem is? He goes, I've got a 256 uh, drive in there. It's one of those um, SATA drives, the SSD drives. He goes, I promise you, he goes, there's no more than, it's not even half full. And it's, to... uh, it's reading that it's full. He can't even back up his uh, his phone anymore. You should ask him if he's got a, a folder that says Windows old on his C drive, Windows yeah. old. I'll, I'll, I'll pop around over the weekend and, say, and have a look at it, but I'm just sort of getting ideas on, on, on what it could be because it doesn't sound like something normal to me. No, what about the – put this speed C cleaner on it. C cleaner, you used that before? CC cleaner won't even get rid of the Windows old folders, will it, Glenn? Yeah. Oh, old. Oh, might not be old. It'll get rid of old install software and stuff. Yeah, but what about the Windows old from doing Windows update? You know how when Windows yeah. automatically, Windows um, 10 updates, it automatically not sure. maybe not. It leaves the old Windows install in case you want to roll back? Yeah, maybe not. No, I'm not sure about that, but but I'd be using so that you know anyway. You, you know when you do a, a normal yep. disk a normal disk clean, a normal Yeah. Once you open up the disk clean window in Windows, there's a button in there that says system clean, and it's exactly the same, but it includes all the system files. Yeah, but I, I guess, still... I guess another thing could be he's probably got a whole heap of uh, restore points which he needs to get rid of as well. Hmm. I, I haven't looked yet. The C cleaner might sort all that out. And yeah, then, do uh, C cleaner. That's the first bet. And, and then, then give, give make, your Windows system one a clean as well. Make sure he's petitioned properly. So make sure he hasn't got any stupid empty petitions. And... Hmm. Um, yeah, so there you go. Yeah, I always get these interesting ones, you know, all the hard ones. People send me all the hard ones. Yeah, yeah. But it'd be something, that'll be something pretty easy, I reckon. Because I don't think Windows really misreports that sort of stuff too often. Oh, that's pretty weird. It's pretty weird. All right, well, let's uh, end off. I'd say, I'd say it'll be the Windows old. Is he running Windows 10? Um, I think he's still running Windows 7. Oh, Mm. It could even still be Windows old because Windows 7 has it as well. Get the C cleaner out and uh, do that. It's pretty good. It's a free version. So it's good. Ccleaner.com just for fun. Uh, okay. That's it. Let's go. Um, all right. What do what we got to uh, – that's it. I think we've done everything, haven't so Joe's we? Just, Joe's just going to let us know when he fixes his computer. Mm. Yeah, I'll, I'll have a look at it during the, during the week. I mean, I can't do it tomorrow. I'm busy doing stuff tomorrow. But I'll, I'll – I'll, I'll, I'll go through those points one by one. I'll start off with the uh, the live CD, rule that out uh, as being a software issue. Then I'll I'll go to the power supply, as Corey has recommended, and um, from there I'll just keep going backwards. Uh, but I my do, initial, you know I, I still have the motherboard though. I do the power supply first. Now while while we're still here, did someone give us a sad face on Facebook? Someone not like us. Well, uh, we'll yeah, I saw you. that. I'm, I'm thinking maybe that's an angry face. Maybe because um, we're talking about the problem that I'm having. I'm guessing that's why. <laughs> angry. Oh, yeah. Alan did it. 
Yeah. Oh, we know he's not. He's not upset at us. But I, I yeah, because he's upset because he, he didn't call in on the phone call That's and right. have a crack. <laughs> All right, you won't forget about that. We were going to take phone calls. She's lucky no one rang in. Alan might have rung in and tore shreds off. Actually, now that, now that we've got this uh, ring in feature, if you have any problems and you're listening to this um, podcast and you have any problems uh, and we come in, ring if, we, us. <laughs> if, you, if you want to ring in and we can help you um, try and diagnose some problems, mm. we've got a, a lot of people out there that, that listen to the show and we can help you. Yes. You can also post your problems on the um, comments if, if you like. If you we can point you in the right in. direction. Anyway, if you're nervous to call in, just post it on the uh, comments. If you're nervous, yep. just call in. That's all right. Just do it anyway. Yeah, you, can, you, can even, you can even post them and we'll discuss them next time around. We need someone to do it. We need to test it to see if it works. <laughs> I thought Alan with his angry face might have rung in and <laughs> given us a mouthful, but it didn't happen. All right, let's get out of here. So thanks, everyone, for coming in and joining us in the Facebook Live. Uh, it's been great to have you there. It looked like a bit of chatter this week, so that's that's pretty cool. And uh, don't forget, you can just get us on the iTunes or wherever. I heard Spotify, what they bought some podcast thing. It looks like they're going to try and rival the Apple podcast, so that, that they're going great guns over there. Uh, yeah, it's on YouTube. On the YouTube video of the show is on YouTube, probably Fridays. And the Aussie Tech Radio, don't forget all that sort of stuff. It's, it's all going on. All right, thanks, Jordan. We'll let you go, finish that beer, and uh, head off to Nine Eyes. I finished it. Oh, ooh, where's the where's the next one? Uh, in the fridge. Well, you you know you are. Only, I, I will. Only light, one. I will, only light ones easy. Anyway, I will allow you to leave for a beer. That's the only they're reason. Heavy. They're not heavy ones. I don't need them. <laughs> all right. All right. See you next week. Uh, good on you, Joe. Right, hope you man. hope you yeah. get your uh, stuff all sorted out for next week. And your mic sounds really good. So that's good stuff. And uh, we'll see you guys next week too. And happy Valentine's Day. What's left of oh, it? Oh, happy Valentine's Day. We'll see you next week. All right. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> see ya.